What's happening guys, Sam Adams here and welcome back to another episode of The Gist of it. I hope this video finds you well and today we're going to be talking about these things behind me which are essentially loot boxes and the way that the ESRB, the system that rates video games, is finally dealing with it uh, even if it isn't the best way to probably deal with the situation but hey, anything's a step in the right direction. So essentially a statement was put out yesterday saying you may have noticed that we've been a little quiet on the topic of in-game purchases and loot boxes but we've been listening. In fact, we've absorbed every tweet, email, Facebook post and singing telegram sent our way and we've been working to develop a sensible approach to let gamers and parents know when a game offers the option to purchase additional content. Starting soon, ESRB will begin assigning a brand new label to physical games in-game purchases. This label, or as we call it interactive element, will appear on boxes and wherever those games can be downloaded for all games that offer the ability to purchase digital goods or premiums with real world currency. This includes features like bonus levels, skins, surprise items such as item packs, loot boxes, mystery awards, music, virtual coins, and other forms of in-game currency, subscription season passes, upgrades, e.g. to disable ads and more. We're also launching a new website, parentaltools.org, to help raise awareness of the helpful tools the parents can use to manage the amount of time or money those crafty kids spend playing video games. This is the first step of many. We will continue to discuss how to further enhance our rating system with publishers, developers, gamers, and especially parents, and we'll continue to make adjustments as the need arises. Thank you all for your patience on this and your love of the games that we rate. With love, the ESRB. This is a unique response to this outcry because essentially it's kind of vague in my opinion. Uh, because the description that I just read to you pretty much includes 95% of the games that I've played over the course of the past two years. I mean, you have things included in this description like loot boxes, like microtransactions. Those are, you know, essentially the core of the problem at this point. Uh, however, you also have things like subscriptions to the game. Uh, you also have things like season passes. You also have things like upgrading from an ad supported version of a free game to something that you pay a couple of bucks for and now it is ad free these are all included and they're all going to be getting the in-game purchases label so essentially you're kind of getting around the point we're, I, I thought the discussion was around loot boxes, at least that's what it was for me. Now don't get me wrong, this is a fantastic move in the right direction because this is an issue that needs to be addressed and there needs to be some kind of widespread level of awareness for kids, for parents, for those that just simply play games. There has to be some kind of understanding that when you buy a game from the store, that is not the end of the purchase in 2018, unfortunately. If it were up to me, there would be no kind of money exchanging hands after that initial purchase of the game, aside from something like a DLC pack or a season pass that includes all of the DLC packs bundled into one big price. That just kind of is okay to me because you're getting more content after the game comes out that is substantial that took time to develop and wasn't simply cut out of the game before it launched. That's kind of where I draw the line. I know that this is never going to happen, but I would love to see challenges applied to specific skins and other kinds of in-game cosmetics and things along those lines to where I don't feel compelled to buy loot boxes to unlock them. Uh, for instance, in Overwatch, just as an example since it's kind of the running one today, imagine if you had to get a Zenyatta skin. You absolutely loved it, you needed it in your life, it was just something you needed to have. Instead of, you know, buying tons of loot boxes and continuously trying to roll and get that skin, why don't you give me a specific set of challenges to unlock and progress and eventually I earned that skin and there you go you have had it it's much more satisfying it's just oh you know it's just much more it, it's, it's better it's, it, it's just better from a business standpoint, I can't really blame these companies for including these microtransactions and loot boxes and, and voice packs and things along the I can't blame them because simply they have a desired good and people are willing to pay multiple times and give multiple dollars to unlock access to this desired good. So it's simply currency being made and money exchanging hands and it's just the way that the economy works. It's the way that this kind of society is functioning, which again is very unfortunate. However, it's nice to see that the ESRB is making a good step, a good first effort effort that is going to continue to evolve to raise the level of awareness for fans, for parents, for kids, for people across the board to better understand what is going on within their game, and I support that with two thumbs up. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I will talk to you on Friday, or you can catch a stream at twitch.tv slash the Samuel Adams. I will be hanging out over there, but as for right now, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the week, and peace.